I'm coming in loud and clear. Might hear me on the radio. Breaker, breaker, one nine. Anybody got their ears? On? Hey guys, it's Eric, owner of Farpoint Farms here in the Mounds, North Carolina. Tonight, I wanted to tackle a request. I have gotten this uh, many, many times over the years. How do I turn this, this RG213 cabling, or RG6, RG8, whatever, into this? Right? We want to have an end on there. So this is a PL259 connector. Tonight I will show you, it's not difficult. You need two things, a razor blade and either a micro torch or a soldering iron. Some solder and some flux. So if you don't already own these things, you can find these very inexpensively. I believe Harbor Freight sells a soldering iron kit that comes with solder, flux, and a gun and it's like less than 10 bucks. I have an older one from I think Sears that I'll be using. Actually, I think I'll probably use a torch for this one tonight just to show you the different ways. But I've got some old cabling. I've got two of these ends. These ends, you can pick these up just about anywhere. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set the camera down with a good light source and I will show you as I cut open the cabling, I'll show you how to install this stuff and hopefully solder it properly. Now, I am not an expert. Uh, it has worked well for me over the years, but I'm sure there are other people out there that can probably do a more perfect job than I can. That's okay though. Doing it myself is a whole lot cheaper than paying somebody else to do it for me. So let's go. All right, to show that you can use multiple tools for this, this is something I got off the tool truck many years ago. I think I bought this from Mac, although it says Master Appliance is the brand. These are also available at uh, Harbor Freight. I don't remember how much they cost, but they're not terribly expensive. This one seems better days when you, uh, oh, there it goes. You can light it, it has an adjustable flame there as well. So there it is, yeah, you can adjust the flame. So either one of these will get the job done, but the solder and the flux certainly helps with that. So let's go ahead and get this started. Here is an RG213 cable. And uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna measure about an inch, so, you know, around, around there. And I'm gonna take my knife here and I'm gonna lightly score this all the way around that inch. Okay, and then I'm gonna take a, just slice it upward. Okay, like that. And what you'll see is now I can kinda peel that away if I've cut all the way through it. Sometimes it might take more than one attempt here, but there we go. You follow me so far, hopefully, right? So this is our outer braiding, this is our shielding. The difference between regular wire and coax is that the center electrode, which you can kind of see down in there, it's a little smushed from cutting, but it's insulated against the outside. So it is not transmitting through this cable, it's only transmitting through the end of this cable. And that's the difference. That's why you can't just use a regular wire for um, CB or ham or any type of radio transmitter. You can for listening because you want the signal to come in from all along the wire, but you can't use it for transmitting. So the next thing I want to do, you can see I'm kind of feathering that out, see that? And I'm just going to kind of continue to do that and I'm going to roll it down. See this? Like so. So we've got it pretty much down. You can see I've kept the braiding mostly intact. Okay, before I go any further, the next thing I want to do is these things here, whoops, they're threaded. So let me put that down, I'll show you this. It's threaded on that side, it's threaded on this side, and the hole here goes through, that's gonna be where our center electrode, but I want to unscrew that. And I want to go ahead and install that onto my onto my coax because if I solder this on first and then I forget, well, I've got to start over and I've pretty much ruined this because I'll have to start over. I have to cut it to get that on and then start the whole process again. So try to remember that. All right, the next step I'm going to make, and this time I'm not going to use the knife, although you can, I'm going to cut this insulation. This is what this big thick white piece is here. And I'm going to cut it maybe See that indentation right there? Just about that much of that white foam, that white insulator. I'm going to carve that out of there. and I'm just going to kind of do that. And you can see, once I've got a nice little dent there, maybe I'll do that a little bit just to finish it off. But I don't want to cut the strands on the inner part. It, you know, it's all right if you lose one, but the more you lose, the less of a 213 you have. All right, there we go. And voila, now we've got it looking just about the way we want to. You see that? Groovy. 
Now it's okay that this is too long, we're going to trim that down to side, but the next thing we're going to do, you can see again that inside is threaded. We're going to slide that down over it, like so, and we're going to begin threading it on to the end here. And uh, don't rush the experience. And sometimes you'll have to get a pair of pliers to help turn this. All right, take a look now. We're starting to see the uh, the insulator, the the copper starting to come through the sides. That's awesome. So I'm going to keep going, and we are almost there. Those things getting particularly snug to turn. All right, I'm fairly happy with this, so I'm going to stop it at this. Okay, all right. This might be a little hard to see, but. I've got copper on both sides. That's the braided shielding that has come through. I've got my center electrode firmly through on the top and I am ready to start soldering. Now you don't need to, you don't have to solder or put solder in those two holes there. Someone might have three smaller holes around here. You don't have to do that. This by screwing it on there has made a contact. The problem there is that corrosion can occur and that can be a problem. The issue with soldering it is you do have that white insulation which can be easily melted. So by dropping solder in there, you may be creating more problems than it's worth. I might try and solder this. In fact, I will, I will solder it, but I don't know that I'm gonna get it super hot. So I might use the, uh, the torch just lightly on that one. This here, we're gonna wanna cut that. And you can see this is, this is angled. So I'm gonna try to cut it at that angle like so, okay? Now this you definitely want to solder. And lastly, before I start any of that, I'm gonna take my razor blade here and I'm gonna kind of trim away. I'll flip this up, you can see here. And I'll try to trim away this excess, this, this stuff here. And I can use my pliers here and trim away at it this way, but I just wanna get that, that stuff off of there. No need to have that poking your fingers when you get that thing installed. So let me go ahead and I'll clean that up and uh, we'll get the soldering iron out and we'll do what we need to do. All right, a lot of interruptions today. There's been some chatter on GMRS. Anyway, back to it. As you can see, I've cut all the metal off. All that coaxial shielding is now cut off. And what I've got here is a little paintbrush and my flux. And I'm taking that flux here and I'm going to put it down in there. Uh -huh. And I'm going to get it in there. And I'm going to do so on the other side as well. And we're ready to start start putting this thing together. And now I'm going to get my solder. And this is where I need more hands than I've got, which is kind of a bummer. Normally I would have this thing in a vise uh, that would hold it steady. But since I'm kind of filming it, I can't do that very well. Let's see. Maybe I will find something to hold it in place. And let me give it a shot. All right, I've got a... It's actually made for like automotive wiring, but hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing here. So what I'm going to do, start this up. I'm going to be heating this. Let me turn the heat down on that. There we go. All right, I'm going to turn the heat down to a fairly low flame. And we're going to heat this thing up. Melt that flux. And melt some solder into it. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, which you can't really see me doing, but all right. Cool. So those are good. We now have a nice contact between the two. And it's time to take care of the top one, this one being, of course, the most crucial. Again, I'll see if I can adjust this so you all can see what I'm doing. It might actually work. It might not. There we go. Gonna heat that up. Hmm. I think I'll put a little more in that one. that 
clean that off with a little wire brush. Did you see in a discoloration there? That is actually the flux when it burns and turns colors. It's not an indication of a bad one there. I'm going to wash that off. We'll thread this thing back up there and, and that's it. Okay, it's all cleaned up. It's wiped down. I've got most of that, uh, well most, not all of it, but most of that flux is off of there. My connections are nice and good. Solder is cooled off. I can go ahead and thread this back on. And that's it. We're ready to go ahead and use this RG213 for whatever project we are looking for. And that's going to do it for today. You could do the same thing with the soldering iron. I decided to go with the torch today because it's just a little quicker. I'm Eric, the owner of Farpoint Farms. Hope you enjoyed how to make your own coax, this being 213, but the process is the same no matter what type of cabling you use. So I hope you'll take it upon yourself to buy a pack of these and make your own wires cut to length. Till next time, my friends. Take care. Something that needs a little fixing on farm.